Yeah. Hi, I'm Mariana Danielovich, and we're here with Jack Devane with Intel Labs, who is your first futurist <laughs> to address the concept of singularity as defined by one of the most famous futurists, uh, Dr. Kurzweil. Um, so how, how, what, is, what are your views and maybe what are Intel Labs' views on singularity? Yeah, so it's a fascinating concept. I don't think it's science fiction at all. It's a, it's a science a fact that we will be able to you know, reach soon in our lifetimes at right, the point of, of singularity and, and move beyond singularity. You know, you know, it's, uh, it's, there's that first question of about, wow, you know, and the realization of what happens when machines are as intelligent or you know, as yeah. capable, but then what happens when we move beyond that. Um, and we certainly have technology that's going to make that possible. So nothing will stop the, you know, the technology path to achieving singularity. Um, it's the question of what do we want to do with that? What do we want the world to be uh, when we get there? Um, and it's not that one person can decide that or um, one group can decide that. Right? It's, it's again, it's, a, it's with the pervasiveness of technology. It's a, Questions sort of for the world to answer. Right? What, what do we do uh, with that? It's exciting, though. Look at all of the um, the, uh, the the world of education, how we've been able to advance education and understanding that something just like the internet. What happens when we have the digital tutor uh, that we can uh, deploy around the world right, for education uh, when we reach the the, uh, the point of singularity or beyond? That that, that would be. Uh, Phenomenal yes. advancement uh, for humans. Um, you know, fundamental yeah. research, uh, the world of yeah. entertainment, yeah. You know, the, uh, the world of uh, content itself uh, can can certainly change. And I think it's it's uh, being part of that. You know, the wonder and the joy and the excitement of reaching singularity, and not that singularity is an ominous uh, point that that humanity will reach. So. Uh, it's interesting to me that Dr. Kurzweil and then a lot of people in Silicon Valley focus on this whole idea when machines become just as intelligent as humans is the point of singularity. Where I would say when, if, if one discusses this topic with some of the rest of the world, what's just as fascinating is that we as humans have evolved our technologies, whether it's biotechnology or nanotechnology or other technologies, to make ourselves in essence live much longer. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem like the two views of singularity are converging at the moment. It seems like the one's developing all on all its own. And it's all about the machines and what else can the machines do. And the other one is all about what would we do once we're able to live longer, whatever live means. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and you know, luckily we have both yeah. perspectives. And I think uh, mm -hmm. uh, either one by itself is necessarily the right perspective to have. Um, it, it will be a blending of, of the two. It'll be the debate of the two. Um, yeah. It'll be the, uh, the argument of yeah. the two sides. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's uh, you know, the, the, definitely the bigger so, conversation to have. Dominating conversation uh, is this okay, one about yeah, so the human side of that. Uh, did you, um, did and I don't think there is in really the, uh, anybody in the technology the world that is um, focused yeah, exclusively yeah. on what does the technology do? How, you know, how, how do we enable this and let the rest of it go? Yeah. What does this mean to people? What does this mean to uh, society? What's capable? And, uh, you know, there. Even when we get to the point of saying singularity is there because we can measure how capable this machine is, how fast it is, or how thorough its response is, um, there, are, there are going to be these stumbles along the way. For example, interpreting somebody's expression. Humans do that very naturally. We get it wrong quite often. <laughs> how will a machine? Uh, you know, what we haven't figured out is how a machine will make that much more accurate or how will it do it. So some of the things that are even, you know, uh, uh, second nature, mundane interactions among humans are exceedingly uh, difficult to, um, to achieve even when you can say we've reached singularity by some other venture. So um, I think the discussion and the debate will continue for a long time. What does it mean to be human and what does it mean to manage singularity? My last question is about the bridges and the biotechnology bridge and the nanotechnology bridge in human 
more towels. Do you uh, think, based on some of the, the research that, that Intel Labs have access to and that some of the, the other companies you work with, that we are really a decade away from the biotechnology range? Yeah, it's, it seems so. There are some very compelling technologies coming in, in the near term in the next 10 years. Um, it's to, I think the, the, the future that people are envisioning, uh, the fusion of biology and technology, um, is, is much further out. Um, I think uh, it's not going to be revolutionary, it will be evolutionary. Um, it will be uh, augmentation, it will come in bits and pieces, it's not going to, uh, I think, be revolutionary. We'll see examples of it, um, uh, experiments in the revolutionary space, but uh, technology generally moves in evolutionary uh, steps, and I think in the fusion of the bio and the technology, it will. Uh, uh, be that way itself, uh, you know, the linking of uh, human and, and the intelligence of singularity. Uh, there, there are just many uh, technical, sociological, ethical issues to work out, um, and a lot of forces will come into play throughout society before, uh, even if we have the technical solution for that, which will uh, yeah, into the mainstream. So yeah, I think it's it's. You know, ten years out, you begin to see the emergence of it. It's probably much later. Um, and yet, being one of the internet pioneers, I viewed in the last 16 years, things go from no one being connected or being able to email yeah. someone else yeah. to now having so many people walk by with so many devices, using them appropriately or inappropriately yeah. in their car or yeah. not. Where you know now, in essence, you're not just um, answering. You're not no longer just using your phone to talk to the phone in the car, but you're texting, you're Facebooking, and this has become a highway patrol message yeah. somehow. You know, 16 years later, we're, yes. we're talking about. I would call that possibly a revolution and not an evolution. Yeah, maybe it's in it's terms. I even think for us, you know, revolution is does it happen in two or three years? Oh, I see. <laughs> so, so you're saying it could happen, but maybe not in hundreds of years. It may be like a decade or two. Right, absolutely. Just like the internet yes. went from nothing yeah. to less than two decades later. Mul multiple and multiple. Yeah, pervasive in the uh, fabric of life. It's yeah. almost like electricity. It has yeah. disappeared. You know, nobody really, you know, a handful of people, most people don't know how this building is wired for electricity. Yeah. Uh, you just take it for granted, you plug yeah. it in, and there's like the like internet's the same thing. It's another grid, like the water, like electricity. Yeah. Don't you think that maybe this biotechnology will become somewhat of a grid? Yeah, it's a, absolutely it will. You know, it will. And I don't know what the uh, what the model is. Do you walk up to a vending machine and, <laughs> you know, you, so you select the augmentations that you know, you want, I don't know, probably not that simple in the future. <laughs> or it just happens by sort of the necessity, like internet did, there was a necessity yeah. to use Twitter in yeah. some of the you know, uh, dire straits situations in the world, and they yeah. use Twitter to get information out, and then some people think it's a necessity to vote for the voice yes. by, by expressing their opinions via Twitter, and then, so it's used in that way, mm -hmm. and maybe the biotechnology will be used in that way too, based on necessity, whether someone sick or wants to look better or wants yeah. to live longer and so on and, and it gets developed yeah. do you think that way? No, I think I, absolutely and I think that, that you know, predicting the future accurately is a fool's game. Right? And it's hard to tell what will be exact usage but you just know, oh it feels compelling, right? You can sort of in an easy way paint a compelling picture. So something's going to happen. What is it exactly that how will it manifest itself and what the usage model will be? It's, it, that's hard to tell. Imagine going back five, seven years and saying it will be something where um, all you can do is send a message with these primitive hashtags, you know, it can't be more than 160, <laughs> and it's going to change the social fabric. You know, it would sound insane, right? Uh, impossible. Um, and so you can't, but when you look at, oh, what is it? It's, it's, it's fairly straightforward technology, right? Uh, uh, become, somebody turns it into a compelling usage and it's transformational. It will probably be that way with singularity. That, uh, but it, it's it's very hard to predict it's exactly what, you know, this or this or this. How many different companies will develop 
how many different transformational products mm -hmm. that would change right. the way we live mm -hmm. as human beings. Right. And, and what, where is society at at that point in time? Is it time for uh, a bolder step? Is it time for a smaller step? That's you know, it's, it's the context of the culture at that point in time as well. So um, all of that will come into play. You know, every year as we get closer, it becomes much more clear on what that might be. But it's clearly a place where entrepreneurs can, can participate. Right? It's wide open right now. Um, core technologies will be developed probably by you know small and large players alike. But the field is not defined right now. So right, if somebody's entrepreneurial, visionary, willing to drive forward, it's a field that's wide open. And it's time, I think, to start spinning off some technologies from Intel Labs into the world yeah. <laughs> on subjects related to this. No, I agree, right? And at the very core, it requires processing power. What luck? That's what we do for a living. That's what you do. <laughs> yeah. so it's so, definitely going to be good for you. Yeah, <laughs> no. And you know how do we get that processing power? Incredible amounts of processing power into very small form factors and into energy levels that are so low we can't even you know, achieve those today. Right? We do have you know a, a finite amount of energy in our planet, and we have a finite amount of natural resources. We have to take that into account when when planning the future. Right? You can't stay on that same trajectory. It's just not scalable with the resources that we have. So, you know, there's a lot of work to be done. But yes, in the end, um, we're very happy in this future. We like the future. It's yeah. coming down. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your views. This is fascinating. I'm sure our viewers would enjoy it. Okay, you're Thank welcome. You. Thank you.